Hi everyone, I'm Celeste. Welcome to my booktube channel. It's January, Happy New Year, and um, I'm just hopping on today to share with you a little bit of a first January haul of 2024 winter. And um, I've got about, oh, I don't know, eight to 10 titles here that I'm excited to share with you. Some of the things I'll be looking at this month. Now, as many of you may know, I love seasonal reading always have um, and so also a lot of my first picks of the year in January um, in sort of going along with the seasons and the calendar I love poetry and so I love seasonal poetry anthologies and so I've got several of those here as well not only for January and winter but for the whole year to come um, the first of those is certainly appropriate for winter and it is a snowy day out there today finally we hadn't had snow in ages so I was kind of happy that it actually did snow um, and so the first one is from Barnes & Noble it's one of their sort of cheap uh, um, well, I shouldn't say cheap, inexpensive um, illustrated editions. And in the past, I've shown you the one for Sherlock Holmes. Um, and then I had another one, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, this one is the Selected Poems of Robert Frost. And this is an illustrated edition. So some lovely black and white woodcuts in this edition. Um, and this is what the back looks like. You can't go wrong with Robert Frost. Um, long ago, I studied at um, uh, Breadloaf Environmental Writers Conference, and we stayed at the Breadloaf Inn in Vermont. And um, I was lucky enough to be able to go to Robert Frost's cottage um, to see where he actually lived. It's more of a cabin, really. Um, and so I really sort of got a feel for him and um, his aura and his presence in that cabin. And um, yeah, so um, this is the early works um, and they're just beautiful. Um, he really is a master of the form. These are the end papers with the lovely sheep and so it's just a really beautiful edition. I think these are like $10 each. Um, and this has many favorites that you'll recognize. Um, pasture, Mending Wall. Um, I'm sure it has The Road Not Taken. Um, but some of my favorites of Frost's poems are actually um, some of the lesser known poems. Here's another beautiful double page spread illustration. And um, so maybe I'll do a vlog specifically on Robert Frost poetry at some point. Um, but yeah, so he's just wonderful. After apple picking, home burial, um, what else? An old man's winter night, a patch of, of old snow, Caesar's lost transport ships. Interesting. The hill wife, the bonfire, a girl's garden. So just lots and lots of wonderful poems in here to keep by your seasonal bedside table. So that is one of my first picks for January of 2024. And then going along with the uh, seasonal poetry theme, I bought these two um, editions. The first is Evan Gar, I think it's Garhi. Evan Garhi. Every day is a fresh beginning, meaningful poems for life. And so this is just a lovely little assortment of poems. I believe that Evan Garhi is a um, Irish actress and um, social media influencer. And obviously she is now also an editor. Um, so they were chosen by her or chosen by she, not sure which is correct, and lots of different poets in these collections. So we have one of my favorites, The Piece of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. Lots of choices here. And so uh, on the back it says, The Stunning Collection of Poetry 
We'll guide you through the stresses of modern life, touching on themes such as friendship, love, home, nature, parenting, and grief. And it gives you empowering verses of classic and contemporary wisdom taken from a wide range of poets. And it will uplift and delight every reader. So, um, yeah, so every day is a fresh beginning. And then as a companion volume to that, also by Evan Garhi, is Every Night is Full of Stars. So here they are together. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, more meaningful poems for life. And so this is to bring solace and joy to our stressful, modern lives themes include love and loss etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and so yeah so i don't know if these are specifically about night but um let's see west of fanny o'day's the waves at spanish point the winds of fate let's see some of these poets i have not heard of wendy cope W. H. Davies, Emma Flynn, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. So lots of different poets in here. Some, um, you know, from the lesser, the road less taken, let's say. Um, so I'm really looking forward to actually both of these collections and I'm going to keep those by my bedside table as well and dip into those as I go. And then also a seasonal anthology is, uh, that I'm really looking forward to is a happy poem to end every day. This was a gift given to me for Christmas by a friend of mine. And this is uh, a Batsford edition. It's edited by Jane McMorland Hunter. Now I have several of Jane McMorland Hunter's um, poetry anthologies. There's two right here and they're kind of far away i don't know if you can see those and i've actually ordered another one about urban nature which is coming out soon it's i think the release date is march but i love these jane mcmorland hunter anthologies and um, i first learned about this one um, I think it's a nature poem for every day. And I learned about that from Miranda Mills. So thank you very much, Miranda. And then once I had gotten that and started researching Jane McMorland Hunter, you know, of course the, the book sites like um, uh, Blackwells and Waterstones and Amazon, they bring up, and Book Outlet, bring up all of um, the other editorial titles and so of course then you want every single one um, so I've waited and waited on this one and I'm so happy happy to add this to my collection look at this absolutely gorgeous colorful cheerful and uplifting cover and ooh, and uh, this friend also gave me a little gift card to Barnes & Noble, so I'm really excited about that. So this gives you actually a happy poem for every single day, and um, by all different authors as well. Sarah Orne Jewett, Walter de la Mer, George Meredith, um, who else, Thomas Hardy, um, Sarah Coleridge, Eleanor Wiley. Oh, one of my favorite poems ever. And I'm going to get to Eleanor Wiley in just a second. But anyway, another anthology I'm definitely keeping on my bedside table because who can't use happiness in 2024? Um, so then the, yeah, I might as well tell you about Eleanor Wiley right now. So this is just a little children's book that I picked up at a secondhand bookstore, and it's not in the best condition. Um, this particular secondhand bookstore is actually connected to our local village library, so it's really cute. They only cost like a dollar or two dollars. They're used, of course. Uh, but one of my favorite poems in here is Velvet Shoes, and... I actually have some other works that, uh, you know, some short stories and other poems t that could be connected to the poem Velvet Shoes, but just look at the illustration for that. Is that not lovely? Wouldn't this make a wonderful bookmark if you shrunk it down a little bit? So I'll just read you a little bit of Velvet Shoes because it's so perfect for January. 
Let us walk in the white snow, in a soundless space, with footsteps quiet and slow, at a tranquil pace, under veils of white lace. I shall go shod in silk and you in wool, white as a white cow's milk, more beautiful than the breast of a gull. We shall walk through the still town in a windless peace. We shall step upon white down, upon silver fleece, upon softer than these. We shall walk in velvet shoes. Wherever we go, silence will fall like dews on white silence below. We shall walk in the snow. A favorite of mine. I really do love poetry. So yeah, this is Winter Poems selected by Barbara Rogaski, illustrated by Trina Shart Hyman. So there's that. And this is from Scholastic Books. And then also sort of along the lines of children's poetry, I want to say that this was recommended to me by Dia from Novel Idea, I think. Um, because I had, um, hmm, I have a poetry book up here uh, by the same editor, um, Fiona Waters, and um, let's see, I'm trying. It's this one over here. <laughs> I can't reach it right now. But anyway, um, and then I think Dia in the comments had mentioned that there is another large coffee table book of children's poems by the same company or same editor and this is tiger tiger burning bright an animal poem for each day of the year so i'm so excited about this this is a chunky monkey of a book it's quite heavy to lift up here look at this tiger on the front isn't he just marvelous and um, the illustrations in these books are incredible. Um, I won't be able to do them justice in this particular video holding it up like this, but um, I will definitely do another sort of beautiful books v video where I show you the actual text and so forth. But let me just find something for you to look at for right now. Hold on. Ooh. Okay, so here are some of the winter poems, and this particular group for January are about horses. So there's one called The Horse by Laura Allen, and there's one called Winter by Andrew Fusek Peters. Now look at this illustration. I mean, come on. <laughs> Beautiful, look at the moon up there and the snow swirling. So I'll definitely have to dip into this one and find some favorites and bookmark them. And it's got lovely cloth um, accents on it and the colors are just so rich and evocative. So another collection. And um, I want to say that it is, who is it? Kate Howe, I think is doing some sort of monthly read along I don't know if it's open to the public or if it's just her doing it, but um, she's designated either April or May for um, reading books about animals. So I may um, sort of glom onto that or insinuate myself into her own challenge um, by talking about this again at that point. And then I've got a bunch more here. Um, I have a couple of uh, goals for this year. In my last video I had said actually that I'm not going to do an awful lot of tags or a lot of uh, read-alongs, but I am going to do a few. Um, now you know I am the Nancy Drew girl. I am such a super fan of girl sleuths and in fact one of the categories of playlists on my channel is girl sleuths. And um, I've done several Nancy Drew videos to date. I am an ultimate Nancy Drew fan. I collect the Yellow Spine Matte Editions. I've talked about collecting Nancy Drew. I've got a couple of first editions. I've talked about where to start with Nancy Drew. And now that I've done that, I'm reading like groups of 
two or three or five, and I'm reading them in numerical order. Now, I'm a huge fan of um, one particular author of the Nancy Drew books in the Stratemeyer Syndicate, um, and those are the books by Mildred Wirt, um, and they do appear earlier in the series. I'm not such a fan of the really late, late titles in the series, but I do want to read them all again. And so at this point, I am on number seven, and that is the clue in the diary. So here is my matte yellow spine edition of that. Love this image so much. So this is the next one that I'll be reading, and I'll share my responses to it with you. And then I have to just sort of interject. I did go to a secondhand bookstore this morning uh, because I had a 20% off coupon and they also have a deal where if you buy four books you get the fifth free. So um, I had actually, a little backstory, I had bought this book before at the same secondhand bookstore. Um, and um, I'll show you the book and I'll show you why I got another copy of it. So the book is The Lost Files of Nancy Drew. This is going to shine a bit in the ring light, but hopefully you can see it. So first of all, it's got this sort of um, magical effect um, where if you go like this, it changes uh, from the scroll being closed to the scroll opening, or it might be a letter. But this is sort of a pop-up book or interactive book for fans of Nancy Drew. I got this for $4.99, and um, I won't go all through it right now because I'll have another vlog just on Nancy Drew, but if you open it up, it's just sort of um, ephemera and things related to the stories, like letters and journal entries and things like that to support the stories. Um, and so it goes through, I think, 12 of the books. So the Secret of the Old Clock, The Hidden Staircase, The Mystery at Lilac Inn, and a bunch more. And there's just sort of like little interactive things along the way, which are so fun. Um, and some of these I don't think have really been open. Look at this is a panel in a library and you you find the sort of trap door. Look at this. I love it. I love it. Um, or I don't know if it, let's say, living history. Hmm. Or there's a different paneling behind it and then she sees what's behind that paneling. That might be it. Anyway, the reason I wanted to show this to you is because in the back is the coup d'etat for all Nancy Drew fans. I just love this to pieces. And that is an envelope with postcards. And you open up the flap to the envelope and inside you will find all of these really cool postcards. I'll just take them out a group at a time so that you can see them. Okay, so now I'm going to put the book down so I can share these with you. But this is sort of like the coolest thing that comes with this book. And in the prior copy of the book that I had purchased about a year ago, from the same place, it was incomplete. It only had like six of the postcards. This particular set is complete. So I am ecstatic. So I now have the complete set of Nancy Drew postcards and there's 12 of them. Um, so it doesn't do all of the volumes of the Nancy Drew books. I wish it did, but um, at least it does 12. So I now have a complete set to keep in the book and I have some extras from the other, oops, sorry, the other edition of the book, uh, which I could send to people or, you know, put on my bookcase or what have you. So we have The Secret of the Old Clock, and this is an old vintage edition like the one I have that I've shared in a prior video. And the backs of the postcards look like this. So you really could send it. There's a space for a stamp. The Lost Files of Nancy Drew, 
and uh, copyright 1930 by Simon and Schuster. So um, the secret of the old clock, the hidden staircase, the mystery of Lilac Inn, oh, beautiful. The clue in the diary, which is um, an earlier edition of what I'm about to read. So it's interesting to compare the different cover art. Um, and then this is beautiful. The clue of the broken locket. Oh. And the secret in the old attic. Is that not wonderful? That's the first six. One of my favorites, the ghost of Blackwood Hall. The Mystery at the Ski Jump. That would be a good one to read at this time of year. The Scarlet Slipper Mystery, a classic. Uh, one of my all-time favorites, The Mystery of the 99 Steps. Iconic, just iconic. Look at this menacing figure way up there. Um, the Invisible Intruder. And a couple more. The Strange Message in the Parchment. And then one I've never read. Um, as I said, I wasn't as thrilled with the last group of Nancy Drew mysteries, but this one I've never even read, so I can't judge it. But this is the 13th Pearl. So that's interesting. So this whole collection of these marvelous cards to go in this sort of interactive Nancy Drew pop-up book. So this Girl Sleuth fan is happy. Um, yeah, so I'll be reading The Clue in the Diary this month. And then I've just um, been reading uh, Kieran Millwood Hargraves, The Way past winter and I talked about this in my last video. This was so good. It's um, children's um, fantasy and it is just so so good. It's so good. Um, it's about a little girl named Mila and she lives in the forest with her sisters, her brother, her father and her mother. Tragedy strikes. The children find themselves on their own and um, her brother Oscar is stolen away by a group of uh, men and boys and she's determined to bring Oscar back so she goes after him and so the three sisters actually embark on adventure and it is beautifully written. I am in love with Kieran Millwood Hargrave now so much so that I have already so I recommend this um, highly. Um, and then um, decided I wanted every Kieran Millwood Hargrave book and so have also from England been sent The Girl of Ink and Stars and this looks just wonderful and this is kind of a special commemorative edition. Um, it's a hardcover. I love it. it's got the yellow ribbon. This one says, Isabella's Island is no longer a happy place. Even the songbirds have gone, flying backwards into the sea. When her best friend Loop disappears, Isabella is determined to help find her. As the daughter of a map maker, she knows how to navigate by the stars. But nothing can prepare her for the dangers ahead, the love that she will feel, or the sacrifices that must be made. For beyond the dry rivers and dead forests, a fiery myth is stirring from its sleep. So this sounds marvelous. Look at the map on the inside cover here. And uh, illustrations all the way through. Uh, let me see if I can find one to show you here. Like this. this is a sectional divider. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, Kieran Millwood Hargrave has written books for both um, children and adults. And so I'm looking forward to reading every single thing that she's ever written. Um, they're just fun. Are they the best fantasy I've ever read? 
or the best children's books I've ever read. I, I don't know, but I think they're up there. I was surprised at how much I liked it because usually I'm a bit snobby about newer releases and tend to go for vintage children's books and things that I grew up with in the 60s and 70s um, and to an extent the 80s. Uh, rather than things that have been published in the last five or ten years. So I was really surprised and pleased by how much I loved it. It was a real page turner. It took me about three days to read it. And then finally, um, I've just started this novel and I'm loving it. I had started um, another book by this author, Laura Purcell, and uh, she wrote one called The Silent Companions. And I started to read that in the fall. And I couldn't get into that one particularly at that time. So I looked at what other books that she had written to see if there was another one. Because I wanted to read something by uh, Laura Purcell. But I wanted to see if there was another one that would catch my fancy or that I would get on with more right now. And I found it. Um, this is Laura Purcell's Bone China, and um, so far it is just so evocative. It's taking place in Cornwall, and it's narrated by a woman named Hester Y, and like W H. Why? And she is a lady's maid working under an assumed name. And this takes place um, partially in Cornwall. I've only gotten a little ways into it, so I don't know the entire story yet. But it's uh, written in the present tense, which is also something I don't normally enjoy. Um, but I read one a few months back that was written in the present tense by a different author and really got on with that one. So maybe I'm changing my mind about that. Um, but this is so evocative and it it's definitely paying heavy homage to things like Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I'm, it's not copying it, but it definitely evokes the same mood and tone. Um, it's kind of a brutal seascape, uh, cliffs and a house and you know the old house and the cook and the maid and uh, the mystery inside the house and what's going on there and it just makes you feel so chilly um, it's it's really you just want to go throw shawls on and build fires and warm yourself because it just creates that sort of uh, dark and menacing Cornish sea cliff kind of a mood, um, you know, where she's going to stay at this house on the top of a cliff and who are the people that live there and who's the mistress she'll be serving and what's the mystery that uh, lies beneath the surface of everything. So um, it's a bit dark and it's just a really fun, good read for January. So, um, you know, I can't fully recommend it yet because I haven't read it. I've only read the first few chapters, but I'm really loving it so far. So um, yeah, there's that. And then in terms of uh, plans for this year, other than um, Nancy Drew, continuing to read those, I don't have a lot of plans. I want to read pretty much by mood and read freely. Um, as so many of uh, the other booktubers I follow are saying as well. So I think it's kind of a consensus people are coming to that they don't want their reading to be forced. Um, you know, but and having said that though, um, I do want to read more broadly in terms of books from different parts of the world. Um, and there is a website online, maybe I'll talk about it in more detail in another vlog, but um, I had read um, two books recently that I loved. One was Moon of the Crusted Snow by um, Wabgisha Grice, and that was set in Northern Ontario, Canada um, on a, um, uh, Native Amer American reservation up there. So it, that was fascinating. And then I read one called Stolen. It was a novel called Stolen, which takes place 
among the Sami reindeer herders in northern Sweden, almost to the Arctic Circle. And that made me realize I'd really like to read more of those because I tend to so much gravitate as an Anglophile towards the English classic novels and American novels. And I still love those and will definitely remain a classicist, but I do want to widen the scope of my reading. And to that um, end, um, there is a sort of book club available online and on Facebook run by uh, two ladies who call themselves the Book Girls. And they send out all kinds of wonderful challenges and all kinds of wonderful lists. And one of their challenges is um, uh, read around the world and read around the USA. And um, I recently saw Ashley, the untrained librarian, I think you might have held up the same map. <laughs> um, this one I printed out from the book girls. And so I swear I'm not copying you. Um, but I, I did have that similar goal of reading more wild, wild, widely uh, literature from other parts of the world, other countries. And so this is just a little tool that they give you to help with that. And um, so, yeah, so this is Read Around the World, Book Voyage, um, The Book Girl's Guide. And so um, they split it into regions. And so I may try to fill a few of those in. I don't want to pen myself in that I'm going to do every single country this year in 2024 and it's going to be a great year, yay. Um, but I'm going to try to pick one country at least. Let's start with that. And then um, to the same um, end, there is also Read Around the USA. And so they divide it into regions. So you, you can read a book from every state if you want to do that. I don't want to commit to anything that intense, but I don't mind choosing one or two regions of the United States and reading more about, um, you know, a novel of local color um, that teaches you a little bit about that area of the states. So, um, and finally, I know I said, and finally about six times now, but um, there's also a tag I, I am interested in participating in this year because I read a lot of history anyway, so why not? And it's Historathon um, 2024. I am making this up right now, but I think it's Vin of Revenant Reads. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. And a bunch of co-hosts. And so they split the year up into four... Um, semesters, as it were, for quarters. And the first quarter is to read a history book from prehistory up through 500 AD. So um, I'm fascinated by archaeology. I'm fascinated by uh, the Neanderthals. I'm fascinated. I watch the show Time Team uh, for entertainment. I watch um, an old archaeology show. Um, I love Time Team. And um, so I would love to learn more about the Neanderthals and I would love to then also learn more about uh, the Romans and the Roman Empire and Roman villas and all of that. So if anybody has any book suggestions for those, I'd love to hear them. Um, okay, so that was a lot. Um, thanks for um, staying with me while I went through my January plans and January um, haul. And uh, what are you reading? Let me know in the comments below. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.